to check my tuning. on that uh, the two bars of the four chord and then we'll be halfway done playing the blues and G with a walking bass line I'm just taking it in little bits because hey Holly uh, just, to, just so everybody can kind of stay on board you can if you're if this is boring for you you can move on or you can also uh, kind of do variations. I'm trying to give everybody something to work with. So when I say, oh, you could also do this, or you could also do that, that's for the people that like already have it down. And if they want to be able to like not be too bored. So I mean, it's interesting because, you know, I've, I've never taught classroom. Uh, I never taught a classroom. I always taught privately one-on-one -on -one kind of instruction. And a classroom, teaching guitar in a classroom scenario is very, very difficult. Um, I'm, I mean, I've done clinics, and it's just, sorry, I'm trying to move this. I'm trying to be able to get to my coffee easier. <laughs> it's the most important thing. Um, but te teaching a classroom full of people holding guitars is like almost impossible. So in some ways, this is the, it, for teaching multiple people, this is the best way because you're all sitting in your, in your rooms by yourself, you know, with your computers and, and you're like, can, you could even mute me and work on something for a minute. Like, oh, wait, let me get this down. Oh, Tom's distracting me. Let me mute Tom. But yeah, you can kind of work on it on your own. Now, the only downside is I can't sit there and go, no, 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 use your second finger or no, get your thumb behind the neck or things like that. Um, you know, I'm just going to move that there. That'll help. It's just kind of crowding me. Um, so that's, like I said, I, I, I mean, I taught clinics, um, and the clinics are a little different than teaching a guitar class. And, and like I said, I've never, I can't remember ever teaching a guitar class. If I, I probably, that's probably, I, I can't remember cause I blacked it out. <laughs> Selective memory. Uh, but I taught clinics and um, I did those for three years. I did like 12 a year traveling all over the country. And I would do like an hour and a half guitar, electric guitar clinic and an hour and a half acoustic guitar clinic. And I was the resident expert. So everybody just kind of sat there and and uh, took what I said as as uh, as fact, um, as scripture but um you know i get people i of course i always took questions and things like that but people go oh, what about this or what about that but anyway um and so you know some people had guitars in their hands but i when i the first couple clinics i taught there were only like 20 people in the clinic and i was kind of glad because i was a little nervous and uh 20 wasn't so bad by the end of that first year i was I had, I was averaging a hundred and I had one clinic in Seattle. I had 200 people at, uh, we literally had people standing in the window sills <laughs> for my clinic. And I was like, it was crazy. But by then I was pretty confident. Um, but yeah, so that's, you know, that's, I guess that's, there'd be four ways of teaching then, you know, one-on-one -on -one clinic situation, classroom situation where everybody's got guitars. Um, and then in this kind of situation where I'm teaching via, you know, Zoom, so to speak, uh, live and everybody's in their own space with their own instrument and then they can apply what I'm teaching them. Now, the only, like I said, the only downside is I can't correct you. Uh, so you're going to have to be your own best. Hello, Tom, what's going on? You're going to have to be your own best critic. Um, hey, Bruce, Bruce is here. Let's see. Do we have Dennis? Is Dennis? I don't see Dennis yet. Hey, John, why? Good to see you. You've missed a whole bunch of stuff. Don't worry. That's the, right there is the culmination of the last two weeks. Right there, all, that's all we learned in the first last two weeks. And so what I did was I put repeat signs around. I don't know why exactly I put repeat signs around this little snippet here, but uh, I guess because you could loop it, but it really doesn't. It's not designed to be looped. 
um, musically speaking, but that's the first four bars of a blues in G. You go to the one chord for a bar, the four chord for a bar, and then the one chord for two bars. Um, typical like... Right? And that's how far we've gotten. The next thing that happens in the blues is we go to the... And look, we're, we're, we're just... Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. Where is the counter? Oh, there it is. Five minutes in and we're already to the lesson. How about that? Huh? How about that for a record? I think I'd have some place to be. I don't, but I do have work I got to do. Uh, I have to write a bunch of Australian rock type music, whatever that means. <laughs> uh, instrumental stuff for a TV show. Because the show is going to Australia for the whole season, so I have to come up with some, some beds that they can edit to um, and use on the show, uh, which is cool. So I get I get royalties from Australia, but it doesn't matter. It's mostly the views are in, in the U.S. So uh, basically, what we're doing, just a kind of an overview, is we're kind of creating a, about the most stereotypical bass lines we can come up with um, to get us through a basic blues. Um, in this case, in the key of G, and we're only hitting a chord on the and of of one beat one so it's one and two three four one and two three so that's where the chord is the bass line is going to be on every quarter note one you know like and you can just play the bass line and that's where we are at this point okay um and i wrote the fingerings in there so if you look at the music you can see the fingers if you look at the tab that's the location of the fingers if you know how to read tab uh, I think I got it right. Let's see. No. Yep, that's right. So now we're going to move on to the, the four chord. We're going to, we need to fill up two bars of, of, of a four chord, which means we have to come up with eight quarter notes of bass line. Um, and what I thought we'd do is we'd start out doing the same exact walking bass line we did with G, that real typical, right? That's what we did for G. But the great thing about that is it ends on a B, which is one fret away from the C, which every one of these in, in this, in this, however we do this, uh, the whole 12 bars, I'm, we're always going to approach the downbeat by half step. We could go... that way to C, go D, D flat to C. We got some new people here, it looks like. Leo, what's going on? Leo makes it. So I, I uh, hung out and jammed with a guy named uh, Jack Ryan Sullivan, a freaking unbelievable guitar player. Uh, hey, Ken, what's going on? How am I doing? It's been really, enjoy playing the uh, last week's, oh, good. Oh, yeah, you put Elixir strings on. That's awesome. Thank you. I mean, I don't know. I don't own Elixir, the company, but <laughs> they thank you. Uh, ACDC. Um, oh, Pepper, may you make an announcement? Yes, I have an announcement. This is my fir first finals week at U. I, I just feel like you've been in school all my life. <laughs> Holy cow. You'll be graduating this May 4th with a BA in psychology and sociology, double major. Wow. Yeah, that makes it especially hard. Congratulations. You're going to you're gonna kill it. You're going to kill it. Let's see. I mean, for one thing, I, you're counting your time with me as hours, right? <laughs> can, you, can you put down, because uh, <laughs> I have friends that are psychiatrists and psychologists and they have to put in hours, right? So you just count the time that you've done analyzing my proclivities. <laughs> As, as credit, okay? I'll, talk, I'll send a note to your professor, to your school. Okay, so um, so we're at C. We're at the four chord. And if we were to do, uh, let's see, just wondering why you're playing double stops on and. No, that's the chord. That implies the chord. So the double stop's a dyad. Um, this is a G7 dyad, and this is a C7 dyad. And this is a D7 diet. So that's, for the most part, all we're going to do. Although when we went to climbed up the G, we played 
played the other, the inversion of the first iad. This one was the seventh on the bottom and third on top. This one's the third on the bottom and the seventh on top. So, so um, when we did the G, we went, I just said, use your whole first finger for everything. Okay, because we're just going up one string, we might as well just use our first finger because we have to be set up to do this. Right that, like that. Well, with the C, we're not going to do the riff the same way. We're going to go immediately down an octave, okay? So we're, and, and as soon as this lesson's done, I'll get... I should have done. I should have done it before the lesson, but uh, I was getting my coffee. I was answering some emails. I ordered something new, kind of interesting thing. I think. Uh, I think you'll like. Uh, you know, I I've got a couple new things. I'm gonna have to like put the name of them on the back with tape because I can't remember what they're called. Um, but uh, yeah, I bought a couple harp-like instruments. Um, one I haven't even tuned up yet, but it's really cool. Um, and I got a, a great deal on it, so I kind of jumped, jumped on it. But um, So I may pull that out here in a little bit if you remind me. Um, but when, when we did the G thing, we kind of we went up one string. This C, we're doing the same line to start out, but I'm going to go right down to the E. Yeah, anybody know who? You can look up uh, Jack Ryan Sullivan. He's a freaking beast on country player. And he he brought to this little jam session I went to on Thursday, he brought, I basically played it the entire time, he brought his 1923 Gibson Lore mandolin. And it was freaking amazing. <laughs> probably probably worth $150,000. Literally, that one little instrument was worth more than my entire guitar collection. <laughs> okay, so we're, <laughs> sorry, we're on C. So let's make the C. It's the same C we made to uh, in bar two. Yeah, uh, and John, the reason is we want to. This is our way of being a one-man band. Um, and you can think of that dyad, that little pop, as being a guitar. You can think of it as a piano, a B3 organ. Like that would be a very typical way. That, a, that a, a jazz organist might play, you know, and he might be playing the bass line with his feet, um, but the, the chord, bah, bah, like that. Or you can think of it as a horn section. I often, when I do little stabby things like that, I often imagine a little horn section playing that, you know, trumpet and a trombone, or, I mean, a trumpet and a sax or something. Okay, but that led us to the C. And so we're gonna play C. And last time we went like this, we went, and we're going to do that again, but we can't get to it right away. We have to, we kind of have to save that. So, <clears throat> so um, we're going to do this, and then we're, we're, so we're playing the third fret of the, oh, thank you, third fret of the third, uh, third fret of the fifth string with our second finger, and then get your first and third finger here on the second fret and third fret to get that C7. So we have an E, which is the third of C7, and we have a B flat, which is the seventh of C7. You don't need a root because the bass player's playing it, right? And we don't need the fifth, that's that's a throwaway tone. The guide tones are the third and the seventh. And here we have the third and the seventh. That is all pretty much all you need to imply uh, the, the chord. So if I, I can play blues like this. Line. Here's the five chord, four chord, one chord, back to the five. And I just went through that whole progression right down here, right here. Boop, whoops, right, sorry, right <laughs> there. One, four, one, one, four, four, one, one, five, four, one, five. That's what that stands for. That's not my phone number. So don't, that does kind of almost look like a phone number though. But if you dialed one, four, one, one, you'd probably just get information. <laughs> I don't know what information you get, but okay. 
So, um, but yeah, so we're just using the dyads to kind of give us a little stab, a little color, a little bit of a, the harmony. So it's not so naked, just the bass line. Cause that's not really, we're not, I'm not teaching you how to be a bass player. I'm teaching you how to be a one man band basically. Okay. So now we're on the four chord. So we're on the fifth bar of the 12 bar blues and we're going to be on four chord for two bars. So what I want to do is I want to do that bass line I did with G on the two bar thing, but I'm only going to do half of it. I'm going to do that much of it. Okay. Um, it almost sounds like, uh, aqua lung <laughs> but it, it's just what it is okay so we got this we got that c7 thing so but let's not worry about the chord for now just play here's play this note here on the third fret of the fifth string with your second finger root and then hit the low e okay open e and then third fret on the e string maybe use your third finger and then open a and then b flat and then we're going to go back to the low E, and then we're just going to go chromatically up to G. And that's going to be the downbeat of the next bar. And see how that leads us to the G chromatically. If I did the whole, see before when we did the whole G thing, it ended on a B, which was really convenient because we wanted to go to C. But if we do that with C, it ends us on an E, and that's not really very close to the G note that we want to be at. Um, so we could probably... Yeah, that's a little weird, but you might do that. Let's see. We could totally do something like that. Uh, like I said, as a bass player, if you're just lost, if you're playing bass on uh, this kind of walking bass thing, just play just <laughs> chromatic until you find what key you're in. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I didn't change any of that, did I? All right, let me edit that. Sorry. Uh, and I didn't monetize either. What am I? Gosh. Uh, my brain all right save all right and then i gotta grab that discord link sorry thanks bruce bruce, bruce is the watchdog all right Doop -doop boom all right so all done all right now so again, let's let's look at what we did there. So with the C, C third fret on the fifth string, then open E, then maybe third finger with the third fret on the low E string, G note, open A, B flat, which is the seventh of C, and then low E, F the first fret, F sharp the second fret, and G. All right. actually playing C like this, which you could totally do. You see what I'm doing? So you know how you play C chord and you play C7 by adding the pinky? I'm totally playing. I, it's almost more natural for me to grab that that first chord, but let's see what we're coming from. Let's see. Yeah, I'd probably do it this way, coming from the thing. If I were just to throw my hand on that C chord, that, that out of the blue, if that were the first chord of the song, I might play it this way. But again, it's all about preparation. So if you're gonna play that line right before it, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna go to my third finger there. I'm gonna go ahead and do my second finger. So place that C note with your second finger and then grab that dyad. Do that for me. Feels like a D7 chord, but you're moving it up two strings and over to one fret. And notice how I'm keeping it short, Bop. like a horn section. You don't want you don't want the horn players going. Bop. Stop. 
know, they'll run out of air. Okay. Lena, what's up going on? Good to see you. What? Oh, man. What the heck? Oh, geez. Okay. Well, the thing I just bought just got refunded. They sold, they sold it elsewhere. I, I hate that when it happens. And now I can't leave them a review. <laughs> it's like, don't put it up on reverb if you don't have it in stock. Idiots. All right. So is that money sitting in my PayPal account now? Or is it... Oh, no, it's refunded to my visa. Okay, good. I hate that. All right, well, now i got to find another one. I searched high and low for that one. Dang it. Okay. So, sorry. <laughs> That's me being upset. Okay, so... Um, so, we're just going to hit that. Now, we're going to have to hit the chord again. Because we're playing two bars of C. So, And we're hitting the... the um, the C chord on the end of one. And also notice that I'm swinging that. So it's like boom, ba, mm, ba. It's not, it's not straight, it's not. It's not boom, ba, ba, da, 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 Or one and two and three and four and one and two, like a robot there, okay? When you swing it, you kind of, you kind of push that eighth note in between the quarter notes a little a little late so you go bun da dun da dun da dun da dun da dun da dun which isn't necessarily hard to do like that but but when you're just playing one chord on that swung eighth note you know it's more of a feel thing and so one of the ways you can kind of get that down is we can just play like that much of it so what you want or you could even just do the chord and hit the low E. All right. So. Um, let's see the. the Just that, but just to, you know, if you were to play it straight, it would sound like this. Swung. Dum, da, dum, da, dum, da, dum. <laughs> Swung can sound goofy, granted, but in this context, it should be fine. Okay, now goofy is good. <laughs> in the blues, goofy's expected <laughs> so now low e i'm using my third finger for that g open a and then when we're on the b note b flat note here with the first finger we got to hit that chord again that's the that's the downbeat of the next bar of that sixth bar okay so we're we're, we're going working our way through this progression so we did we've done these first four chords now we're on these two chords here the two the four chord and we may continue i may go all the way to the end of this okay uh but we need a good way to get to that five chord so that's what's coming up that's the new thing so maybe we'll do since we're already kind of already laid the foundation for the c c chord thing um then maybe we'll go ahead and go on to the next one uh Oh, Bruce, I missed that. Sorry. Yeah, you don't need the fifth. It's not a triad, though. It's a seventh chord. Yeah, you don't need the fifth and the seventh chord. It's, it can, uh, the fifth, the fifth's great for rock. Um, but for jazz or blues or, you know, kind of seventh chord we don't really need that fifth so we're simplifying the chord but that's again it's what if I were doing a horn arrangement I probably wouldn't have a horn player playing the fifth I would have him playing the just the third and seventh main. okay so 
Okay. So on the C, we're doing that. And then we're going down to open E, fifth fret, open A, first fret. And then I'm playing this for the chords. So, so check that out. All right. It's just a diagonal. Look at that. First fret, second fret, third fret. I know, right? I should be getting royalties from Starbucks, man. I don't need the sleeve anymore because it's not hot, but yeah, it's like, so anyway, back to, I should get, I should be definitely getting an endorsement from Starbucks. I own the stock, so I guess technically I'm uh, promoting a company I own. <laughs> so, I, and the funny thing is I, I, I own, I bought Starbucks in 2008 because the economy was crashing and and um, I did some research on the Great Depression and there were two things that that uh, during the Great Depression uh, there were two industries that did well and one was the movie industry and the other was hair salons and uh, the speculation was basically people like to just get away from their bad lives and they watched and especially during the Great Depression the movies from Hollywood were just everybody was really rich and fancy and doing it so people could just kind of put themselves in the in the places of the Hollywood celebrities and for you know an hour and a half pretend like they were rich or imagine they were rich and then um, hair salons I think because women wanted to feel it was something they could do where they wouldn't feel poor um, and I thought well what 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 will make people not feel poor if we go into complete dumpster fire you know, if the economy became a pretty big dumpster fire. And I thought, you know what? People, people getting their $5 coffee every day will be the, that thing that will um, make them feel like they, they, all is not lost. And sure enough, <laughs> Starbucks did so well. I mean, so, you know, I didn't, I, so I got to a certain point where I tripled or quadrupled my money. I sold half my stake. So I, now whatever I own in Starbucks is 100% profit. But I sold half my steak and I bought Dunkin' Donuts because my kids were into Dunkin' Donuts. And I'm like, the heck is Dunkin'? Really? That was like when I was a kid, Dunkin' Donuts was like, you got donuts and coffee was like secondary. But the, my kids were into it. I'm like, well, that's weird. Kids are into Dunkin' Donuts. So I bought Dunkin' Donuts and that went up and then it got bought by a private equity firm, which, of course, then it went up even more because they had to offer a price that everybody would agree to. I didn't have a choice, but so yeah. So then I took that money. I forget what I put that money in, but um, I've had that happen three times, at least three times, where a company I bought stock in, I thought, you know, this is a good. This is an undervalued company. It got bought by uh, an equity firm. I bought Michaels. Thank you, John. You're you're paying for this advice here. <laughs> Michael's the, the um, when COVID happened, I bought Michael's because I thought, okay, now everybody's homeschooling. We homeschooled, and so we would go to Michael's all the time to buy supplies to do crafts and stuff like that at home. Well, now everybody's doing that. So I thought, well, that would be a good play. And I, but I was just, I was kind of, there's a Michael's right around the corner from me, and I was like, um, there was always a line there. I would go there occasionally and there was always a line to get stuff. And I'm like, wow, this, this one's doing really well. And everybody seemed to be happy to work there. And I looked, I pulled up the stock and it was, it was trading at three and a half times earnings, which is like, what? That's like, that's like lower than a major manufacturer like Caterpillar or Ford or, or, or GM. And I was like, what is the deal? So I bought that thing for like $5 a share or something. And I, 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 then that got bought by a private equity firm. I think I had like just in less than a year, I made 500% return on that one investment. Um, but again, I was like, I didn't want to sell it. I liked the company. I wanted to hold the stock. It didn't pay a dividend or anything, but I just thought three and a half times earnings or two and a, I think it was two and a half times earnings. I'm like some, usually when something's two and a half times earnings, because there's a warning and then the stock price went down and the next thing you know, they have no earnings. But that wasn't the case with them. So I was like, I don't know what's going on. But that was the other one, Guitar Center. Um, I bought Guitar Center way back when at $7 a share and Bain Capital came in and bought it. Um, and they were on the verge of bankruptcy. Then COVID happened and I would go into Guitar Center. I'm sure you all experienced this too. And the shelves... Like they hardly had any guitars. Half the hangers were empty. And in my head, 
I'm thinking, oh yeah, because because Fender and Gibson and Taylor and all the companies know that they're going bankrupt, so they won't sell them any merchandise. And I said, so are, you guys are going under, right? And they go, no, we can't keep guitars in stock because everybody's taking up guitar during COVID. And of course, I saw that firsthand with the the number of people watching our live stream, right? So, um, oh, and, and John, thank you for what you said here. Um, I'm glad you. I'm glad you're learning. Yeah, and that's John. That's a big thing too. Two notes. All you need a dyad. Two notes. Not even a triad. A dyad. That's all you need to know. Uh, uh, I just. I. I can. I'm. I. Let's see. I. I. My account's at Chase, so I can. I can do it on my phone. I can. I usually do it online. You know, through a through a browser. Um, I. But I don't. I don't have to pay agent fees or anything like that. Um, they want to manage my money, but of course, then they take what one percent every year, and it's like I don't like to see my, uh, you know, in a bad year, um, I, you know, you lose twenty, thirty percent, and then they take another one percent. It's like for what? <laughs> so, uh, it, the funny thing is that <laughs> sometimes my the the broker that I do deal with at Chase, um, he um, uh, he. He basically, you know, like I'll bring up a stock. I'll be like, hey, you know, I'm going to buy this stock. And he's like, oh, never heard of that. Next thing you know, he's buying it, too. So and sometimes for, for worse, <laughs> not always for better. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I basically try to hedge my life. So back in 2007, when gas prices hit five dollars a gallon here, and that was a lot. Uh, that would be like them hitting eight dollars a gallon today. But in 2007, when gas prices hit five dollars a gallon, they were even hitting close to five in Michigan when we went on vacation. I bought Chevron, and so that's done very well. Um, so um, uh, yeah, so uh, you know, hedge my life. When like when Biden became president, um, I bought. Northrop Grumman <laughs> and I'm like way way up on Northrop Grumman <laughs> because there's been all sorts of you know things we've gotten involved in <laughs> and so I'm like yeah you know you you can just kind of you just look at what's going on around you what's either happening in the world or what's happening to you personally and and then buy it so uh, with us I own part of the house down payment was from McDonald's I made so much money on McDonald's stock and the reason I bought McDonald's was because we were going there a lot. We had kids, and they loved the ballrooms and the slides and all that stuff. And so I'm like, yeah, everybody's kids love McDonald's. So it's kind of the Peter Lynch. He he was the Magellan Fund manager that made up millionaires out of a lot of people. It says it was kind of his mo was to kind of buy what you know. So um, yeah. So yeah, that's my stock advice. Hedge your life. I'm not giving particular stock. I wouldn't give you a, a stock recommendation. So none of those were recommendations. Yeah, again, well, here's, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, this is a whole different lesson, but it's valuable. Trust me. Here's what you do. You go to Yahoo. You create an email account if you don't already have one and create a fictitious. I think you got, there's apps you can do this with, but create a fictitious portfolio. Take pretend fifty thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, put it in five different stocks, okay, and make sure they're in different sectors, and then watch it go up and down so that you get used to seeing the market go up and down. Um, it's a little difficult because if you buy a dividend stock and you get a you get a quote unquote fake dividend, um, you have to remember to add that to it so you can see it grow that way too. I like dividend stocks, uh, but you could do something like a one of one of them could be a. Um, you know, energy of some kind. It could be green energy. It could be uh, Chevron. It could be anything. Um, and then maybe banking, uh, technology. There's three sectors right there. You could also do uh, real estate, um, and that would be a real estate investment trust. And those tend to have really good dividends. That's why I like REITs. Um, so I've had a lot of REITs through the years. Um, and you know, so you pick five different sectors. You could do you could do consumer. I'm not a huge. I mean, Starbucks is one of the few consumer stocks I've bought. Well, and but I guess all three of those I mentioned, though, that got bought by private equity, firm, equity firms were all consumer. Uh, Guitar Center, Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, and Michaels. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, like, if you, 
like if there's a big new restaurant chain that goes public, those are almost always dog stocks. You can chase those and I, I you know, I, I've bought a couple of those and I've regretted it. Um, but you know, I owned PepsiCo for a while, sold that, sold my Intel to buy for the, again, for the down payment on the house. Um, what else did I sell? Motorola. I, that didn't do very well. Uh, McDonald's stock. I can't remember. There was another couple stocks I sold to, uh, for our down payment, but, and the drag on that is I had to pay cap gains and then I could use that, you know, so. Okay. So now we have to see. That's our, that's our chord on the second bar of the C chord. Yeah, George, uh, yeah, Lynch's theme was by what you know, exactly, right? But not exclusively, necessarily, because let's say you're a farmer. You wouldn't want to only buy farming company stocks, like Caterpillar. But John Deere's been very good. We own John Deere. I think I put that in Beth's Roth account. Okay. And again, after I hit that B flat, instead of going back down doing the, instead of doing that, I go chromatically from the E to the G. So play this. Okay, do that with me. The little diagonal thing. I'm at first fret, second fret, third fret. Then low E, first fret, second fret, third fret. Morgan Chase. That's right. And I've been through multiple, um, uh, multiple stock market crashes. 87. Uh, in the 90s, the market was down a little bit. Uh, the, uh, of course, 2000, 2001, the, the dot com crash. That was a brutal one. The NASDAQ went from almost 5,000 to almost 1,000, lost almost 80% of its value. And I had just bought like GE, Metro Media Fiber, which went bankrupt, so I lost all my money on that one. Um, and Cisco, which I still own, but is still not, <laughs> in 20 plus years, is still not where I paid for it. <laughs> so, Although I have reinvested the dividend, so I'm probably even on that stock. I'm not trying to tell you I'm a guru here when it comes to stock. I've lost everything on a couple stocks. I've lost all of the stocks. I, uh, all of the money I put in some stocks a couple times. Uh, Metro Media Fiber was one, and the other one, the other one was right before the my my stepbrother recommended, and I, I won't take his advice anymore because everything he recommended when I bought it it went down. Um, but uh, it was uh, some mortgage company right before the housing collapse, and that was a bad one. They they did high end mortgages in in the Southwest, so but they don't exist anymore. Okay, so we've got so so far here's the whole thing. simple we're gonna do the same the first riff we did the original riff we're gonna do for G and then we're gonna do a chromatic climb up to the to the D note which is the one the root of the five chord okay sorry about all these numbers <laughs> don't worry there's no quiz on any of this but I'm gonna say it enough in these lessons so that you'll understand what all that means because you will have heard it enough and seen it and played it yourself and it'll make sense so Yes, oh, especially. Well, and here's the thing. Here's the here's the thing of the stock market. The big moves like this, up and down, blah blah blah. Those are those are there's two two emotions at, at play, and you just don't subscribe to either one of them. Greed and fear. If you don't subscribe to greed and fear when it comes to the stock market, I'm a buyer and a holder. There are people that day trade. I couldn't do that because it would I would be so nervous all the time. Because usually to make a trade worth your while, you're going to have to trade a lot of shares. 
to, if you're going to day trade because you're 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 hoping it's going to go up 12 cents or something and and so you're going to, to make any money on 12 cents you're going to have to you're going to have to have 10,000 shares so you might at any one point during a day trade you might have all of your money on one stock i could never do that i know people who do it and i couldn't do it um but uh that said um I, I'm a buyer and holder, and so I find companies I like. I don't buy gold. I, 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 I buy I'm, the commodity I'm investing in is the commodity of people wanting to um, make their mortgage and car payments and get their kids through college. <laughs> so all these companies that uh, what am I getting tech? Oh, I'm getting a message here. What is this? Oh, there's one more queue. So that sweet doesn't mean acoustics jump the water goes up and down. Okay. Wonder if we have <laughs> I, I, one of the composers I work for is asking me to do something this morning, uh, but I think he's fine with this afternoon, so we're good. Uh, for Apex, I do all the guitars on Apex, so <laughs> take a sip. All right. Stephen Barton says hello. <laughs> he also does the music for Picard. So if you're, and I worked on Picard, if you're a fan of Picard, uh, I hear this season was amazing. I, I don't have Paramount Plus. I need to get it. Uh, I think I can get, well, you can do like an ad version for like five bucks a month. Or something. I might do that because there's a couple things on, on Paramount Plus that I might watch, but Anyway, Stephen Barton says, hello, live stream. Okay, so again, what I'm trying to do with these, these, this walking bass thing is I'm always trying to arrive at the chord change whenever the chord changes chromatically. Now, like for example, when I'm on the one chord two times there, right here, those two one, I don't need to, I don't need to get chromatically to the G note here. Okay, um, so. That n I'm nowhere near the G note at this point. But, I, but when it goes to the new chord, that's what I'm trying to do chromatically. What chromatically means is a half step away. And what that means is one fret away. Okay? So I can, I can go from that G to the C. I can either go like that. Or I could go. There's, I've got the C note right here. It's third fret on the, on the fifth string. I, chromatically, I can approach that note from two places. Here, one note below, and one note above. Now, it just so happens that the note below, the B, is, again, no quiz on any of this, but listen to what I'm saying, and eventually you'll start going, oh, he's talking about the third, no, the seventh, and you'll be talking to your friends like, oh, yeah, you know, the seventh chord has a one, three, five, seven, well, you know, okay. You'll start to get it, you'll start to be able to reiterate it. Um, but it just happens to be the third of the G chords. So it's perfect. The, the, this this way is that note, that D flat, is not in a G chord. It's not in the key of G, um, but it still sounds great because it's a flat five. Here's five, like a power chord, G and D. The flat five would be D flat. Okay, but... I could just create a loop of G and C. using chromatics I can that one's a t that one's fun I might do that anyway that's kind of what I'm trying to do with all of these walking bass lines so every one of these will will um, lead chromatically to the to the next the chord change okay so we, we've got the C, the 
the C riff is so again we're 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 on these two bars here with the C and then we're going back to the G chord. The G chord is the one chord. We're in the key of G, that's why it's the one. So the C was that. So again, just the bass line, third fret, bottom string open, third fret, open A string, first fret A string, bottom E string, first fret, second fret, third fret, and we're back to C. And see that we led again chromatically F sharp to the G and again in the key of in the key of blues or G blues you know you have an F natural F sharp isn't isn't technically a, a correct tone but you're on your way somewhere it's a passing tone so it's a real you can play it it's totally fine in fact one of the one of the tricks you can use to play over like a, a, a G. now this is kind of sounds like gypsy jazz to me but you can take your your little triad here, the G triad, and you can you can you can play up a fret and down a fret from the triad, and that totally works. And none of those notes are in the key of G, really. I mean, I think that F sharp is in G, but other than that, none of these notes are in the key of G. None of them are in the key of G mixolydian. So, or they go, I guess that C note would be. But yeah, so I'm just I'm basically what I'm doing. Is I'm surrounding each of the individual notes in the triad. I'm going below and I mean above one fret and below one fret, and then the, and then landing on the note I want, the, the chord tone. So if you just <laughs> look at my second finger, I'm not going to isolate it. <laughs> Watch my second finger on this lick, and you'll see that it's just just playing this triad. Watch. great with minor chords too. I might go I might go up a whole step on the high note but anyway so hello everyone AJ what's going on AJ Jack Lloyd sorry I didn't see him I mean I saw your comment but I didn't say hi to you sorry about that and Dennis I'm sorry I didn't say hi to you either um I'm, let me just click on what are we looking at 24 okay not bad we wait we were we were peaking earlier what, what did we get to 30 come on we can get higher than that uh, don't forget to hit that like like button for me if you can. Um, okay, so now we're on the one chord again. So we've we've gotten through here, and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna write out um, the next four bars. Okay, I'll do it on uh, when I get to my after we're done. I have to. It's I have finale on my laptop. I don't have it on my, finale. It's so it's kind of stupid expensive, and they don't let you keep it on multiple devices, which really ticks me off. And anyway. So um, uh, I'm gonna. So anyway, so let's do this. Uh, let's come up with a. Sorry, let's come up with a G riff. And I think I already did. Yeah, I already did. We're gonna start out with a triad, and then I'm gonna. I'm gonna sound like I'm doing the triad, but I'm gonna go to the D. All right, um, and then. Um, Okay, so over the G chord, I'm gonna go first finger on the G low G note there, and then get the little dyad like we did before. So this is the same. The first, I'm just gonna copy and paste that first bar. Simple as that. Jimmy V, what's going on? Oh, it's a D30. Uh, it's a D35. See, somebody told me you can tell it's a D35 because it has a three-piece back. Like a 28 has a two-piece back. 35 has three-piece back. And it's uh, mid 70s. And it was kind of an abused child. It was really abused. And you can't really see because there's wood filler. But apparently it was either originally a left-handed that they turned into a right hand. Or it was uh, a right hand. They turned Linda left and then back into right. <laughs> I don't know which. So. Okay. Yeah, I've got a licks. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Um, Bruce knows all. Okay. So the... So we're going to do that same as that first bar. OK. 
Okay. You don't need to see my face. <laughs> that actually works really well, doesn't it? But the note we want to get to is this D here. Okay, that's the five, that's the root of the five chord. And that's the lowest D we can hit, right? Sadly, because we're, our low note is an E, so we don't, unless we drop E, but then that, uh, drop D, and then that's a whole other thing. So that's the note we want to get to. So the first bar of G, we're going to go like that. Actually, I have a lot of, I was talking to Paul Davids. I said, Paul, what what percentage of women do you have watching? And they said like 2%. I said, there's no way. They don't. I said, you got to be 50-50 because I've got a, I've got like 12%, you know, Holly and, and uh, Pepper, you know, and it's like, but I feel like my women count's going to go up right now because my face is covered. <laughs> So we, got, so we got that first part. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do going to the D chord. Check this out. We're going to play the G again. So I'm, I'm doing the G bass note, and I'm hitting that dyad right there. Okay. It's so a middle two strings, third fret and fourth fret. That's, a, that's an F and a B, and that's the seventh and the third of the G chord. No quiz. Don't worry. And then I'm just going to go to the B like I, would, I did before. just going to go up to chromatically from B right for just now for now just use your first finger okay but again I'll move this back out of the way um, <laughs> Holly I love you too uh, ah dang it there we go um, the um, Ultimately, we're gonna, we, we talk about being prepared, right? It's all about being prepared. And so um, I, I know that I'm going to need to hit this chord as soon as I hit that D note. So if I put my first finger on that note, I can't, I'm going to I'm gonna have to do a big jump like that. So if I just have my second finger on that note, then it's real easy to get that. It's the same as the C. Okay. So at some point as you're going up the fretboard there, it doesn't have to happen at the last minute, it doesn't have to happen right away. Just at, at some point, I would go ahead and use your first finger for that B, that first note there. <clears throat> hey, good karma, what's up? Oh, you like the history on the guitar? Yeah, it was, yeah, in fact, the, it's got, here and here, um, the the uh, there's cracks in. I don't think. Can you see that? You can't really see it. I don't think, but because it's right on the dots, uh, that cracked and it looks like it was repaired. The, this was totally warped. I got it for eleven hundred bucks at Guitar Center, and I was like, Martin for eleven hundred bucks. I said, I, I gotta. And so I took it to my guitar tech, and he fixed the, you know. Uh, fix the this there was a rattle he fixed inside the loose um, bracing and that's fixed so now it doesn't rattle anymore so that's good so I it's really my main guitar I've used it on a million things it's always it's always out um, so um, so at some point get your second finger on that D, on that uh, a string you can do it right away walk up on the second string finger okay so when I do the next four bars and tab um, it's gonna stop here <laughs> okay but I'll probably I could do you could do your second finger right away like that and you could save it to the very end it doesn't matter really is dealer's choice at this point okay and then we'll we'll figure out a way to go from d to c from c to g to g to d again okay um that's um how did i end up buying it i i just was at guitar center playing you know it was the one in pasadena where where i lived and um just just got the credit card out and bought it but um 
I mean, I liked it as soon as I picked it up. It was, I've learned a lesson. If I, if I find something that I like, I just buy it because every time I've like gone, Oh, you know what? I should go back and get that. I've done that so many times, like literally go back and get that the same day. It's like, there's someone following me around, watching me play guitars at guitar stores. And if I, if I play one for more than one minute, then if I leave, they buy it. <laughs> That's what it feels like because I, there were so many times that I I, I went to, um, uh, you know, look at something or just just randomly at a guitar store, pick up an instrument and go, wow, this is nice. Huh, I like this. And then I get home and I start thinking about it. It's kind of the same, <laughs> it's the same stupid thing. Like being a dad, it's just, it's like the kids say, hey, can we go do, the, can we go get ice cream? No, we're not going to go get ice cream. And then 15 minutes later, I've been ruminating. I'm like, yeah, you know, ice cream sounds pretty good. <laughs> the kids know me. They know. Just ask, take the no, and then wait 15 minutes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm, on, I'm on reverb right now. I'm going to try to find another one of these things that I, that I bought. And it was like, dang it, why did you suck? Oh man, there are no other, I mean, there's expensive ones, but not, I don't want to spend that much money on this thing. Uh, fudge. All right, so I have to go to, um, here, uh, can I just buy from you guys? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can. They can just send me one. I'll call them. It's uh, it, it, I'll tell you what it is. It's a fretless banjo with nylon strings. I saw a guy playing it, and I'm like, oh, freak out! That's cool. And so I ordered one last night and paid for it, PayPal it said shipping on the way, and then I get a refund today. I'm like, really? So I'm gonna go to go, call Gold Tone and see if they'll just send me one because. I can, I can, I, you know, I can get it cheaper from Gold Tone. They don't, they don't sell retail, but all the Gold Tone stuff I have, I bought from them directly. I haven't bought from a store. Um, let me just see if somebody else is selling it not on Reverb. I hate to do eBay. Uh, but it's just a cool, cool thing. Base. Oh, they have a bear. They have a bass banjo. That's cool. But they want it's eleven hundred bucks. Okay, this one is actually cheaper than what I paid for it. But shipping. What's shipping? Free shipping. All right. Well, let me. When are you? Oh, are we sure it's fretless? No, it's not fretless. See, that's the thing. It's like, dang it. Did I put fretless in the? I did. Ugh. Yeah, I'll just go to Gold Tone and see. That, that kind of stinks that they did that to me. I'm kind of upset, but you know, oh, they didn't do it to me. They didn't do anything to me. My life is so hard. <laughs> I'm going to call these guys, though, and say, Do you, are you getting any more in, or what's the deal? Why did you bail on me here? Uh, they have lots of weird stuff, which is cool. Um, makes me wonder if they wanted to just sell it for more to someone else or something. I don't know. They do have some weird instruments, but anyway, I'll call them and see. Do they have a Oh, they do have a phone number. Yeah. So, Okay. So, uh, who else is here? Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm not the, <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I, now this Jack Ryan Sullivan, he has like 200 guitars. And like I said, last week, last week at jam session, he let me play his lore mandolin. That probably is worth about 150 grand. Um, I, I don't know if I could afford to pay his insurance, let alone buy any of his guitars. But he has a ton of vintage guitars. 
so I, um, yeah, it's, I mean, I, I'm not, I don't, I mean, you look around me and you see all these weird, these things up behind me on this, none of them were very expensive. None of them. I mean, it's just like everything on that wall, probably the most expensive thing was the Telecaster baritone. And that was probably like 800 bucks. Everything up there, the, the Epiphone there, that was $80. I think I paid like, oh, the gold tone was probably that the Irish bazooka is probably 800 bucks, but the Oud was 350. Uh, the Gretsch resonator was like 400 bucks. You know, I'm just, I buy things cause I need the sounds. Um, you know, if I ever really got into like resonator guitar and like it was my main thing, I'd yeah, I'd go out and buy a really nice one. But the problem is, I'm like, before I can get really good at something, I'm like picking up five more things. So, <laughs> so I've got to be able to. Oh, I told you I was going to show you something I got recently. I haven't tuned it yet. But it's basically a five string harp. Uh, wooden hot heart box, but it's really old. It was made in Duluth, Minnesota. Well, I don't know how old, 1992, not that old. But the, I don't know if you can see in there, but yeah, the decal is really kind of old fashioned looking. It's really cool. Um, and it's, you know, it's one to one. So I don't know what to tune it to. I'll do some research on find out what the tuning should be. It's just regular guitar strings. So if I break a string, it's not a big deal. They all feel like they're tens or smaller. I don't, I mean, I've got a uh, micrometer so I can measure them. These, well, these two might be tens and these might be nines or something. There's, you can't really see them very well on the thing, but it's a beautiful little thing. And I didn't pay very much for it at all, but it's just, and it, you know, just for now, for now it's a wall hanger, but I, I will, you know, I'll use it. I can tune it to whatever scale I really want to tune it to. Um, and, you know, could even, I could even tune it to a chord if I want to strum it. But yeah, it's it's just, I just thought it was really cool looking and I didn't have one. And I'm like, well, it's just another instrument I don't have. It seems to be very well built. I mean, I think it's just pine. Can you tell? <laughs> Is that, yeah, that's just pine. Look at the, the pine. <laughs> You know, so it's not like it's some amazing tone wood or anything. I should send a picture of to, to of that to an old guy down in uh, Nashville, Indiana, because my uh, I've had a couple things. My Bode Psaltery and my lap dulcimer was made by him. I had to make me a chromatic dulcimer. Because dulcimers are tuned to like have these weird fret arrangements where you can't play minor stuff or whatever. Yeah, instruments, are, that's exactly right, Karma. Instruments are just, just inventory for me, right? So um, let's review the, the new section here. I'll go note by note and see if you can play it. Our two chords are the G, um, see we're on the, the four chord, the C, this chord, and then this chord, okay? So the we're on the four chord, we go C, okay, and then we hit the, let's just do the bass line first. Second finger, open E, third finger, third fret, open A, B flat, first fret, and then open E chromatically up, with your first finger and then here okay make the G chord and then we're gonna go second fret on the on the fifth string uh, then pinky on the fifth fret of the fifth string and then back down to the second fret of the fifth string and then back to the that to the G chord again so we're gonna move our first finger like that and then we're 
we're just going to go chromatically up from there. Oh, I would say it's a lot less. I, I say what you're seeing is maybe, I don't know. Maybe one fourth isn't too far off, I guess. I mean, you can't see over there. You can't. I've got guitars over here, over there. I've got guitars hanging over. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let me see. Let me see if I can move the camera. Hold on a second. How long is the cord on the camera? Here we go. So, yeah, you can see more guitars over there. My two rock amp, the heater. There's that. And then there's a SG there. Another Squire, a seven string, and a fretless bass. <laughs> And then all sorts of crap. So <laughs> you're getting the full tour now, huh? Now, now it's probably not going to be in the right position. That's not bad. Actually, probably better. A little bit. Let me throw it this way a little bit like that. I can move this over here. But there's, yeah, there's instruments down the hallway right there. <laughs> and in the bathroom. I All my small things I hang up because um, I forget that I have them if they're weird instruments you know I don't know I think it was better before but it, like that I guess I don't know uh, but yeah there's and and there's a lot most of my stuff is not out so yeah it's about this probably represents about a fourth of what I have most everything else is guitars though because I'm like oh which guitar should I use and most of the time I'm just great if I need acoustic I just grab the the Martin because it's out. Um, I'm not like going, oh, you know, she get the Gibson Dove and play that on this. It's, you know, that happens. But for the most part, it's like I'm just trying to get stuff done and sent off to the, like the stuff. In fact, let me go to my, let me go to the folder here and see if I got something to download for that new, where is it? There it is. Um... Because I've got to work on some Apex stuff today, this morning. My first guitar boom season today. Okay, yeah, there's definitely something in there. Oh, there it is. Oh, wait. No, okay. There it is. Okay. Let me download. More options. Download. There we go. Okay, downloading. So, hopefully I didn't just stop the download. Um, yeah, so let me, um, um, the heater, well, let's look at the instruments. Let's see. Squire, $99, Squire, $99, Squire, $99. Okay. Um, a cheap, uh, six string banjo uh another squire and a 1940s k archtop but it's it's a it was a, a very cheap one so uh you know and my my squire bay you know no uh being cold is worse uh, you know <laughs> if uh, you know and i do have you uh, i do have humidifiers we've had such a um and i've only had that heater in here this year and we had so much rain and such high humidity that i keep track of the humidity here and um, it's not, the humidity has been, you know, it's fine in here. So, I mean, it's a little low right now because it's not been raining. Uh, but yeah, not, to, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. Let's say if I had a room full of vintage Martins and I had a heater and that thing I have on the lowest setting. So it just, if I shut my doors, this is room is really small. If I shut the doors, um, and uh, have the all my you know mic pre's on and the speakers on and everything computers on, um, and I'm sitting in here, uh, it warms up pretty quick. Um, so I don't really have to have that on very hot. So if I'm in here working for 10 or 12 hours, um, yeah, it's just me breathing is enough to heat up the room. <laughs> my hot air is enough. So uh, let's see. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm, 
Al, you know, I, I've actually known guitar players that when they kind of came to the end of their careers, they just open up a store and sell all their gear. I couldn't believe it when uh, Jack, uh, uh, let's see, what was his name? Jack, Jack Sullivan, Jack Ryan Sullivan told me that he had like 200 guitars. And the guitars that I saw that he had were like, oh my gosh, those are like vintage, really nice instruments. <laughs> I'm like, dang it. How did you do that? You know, how did you, what do you, what do, you do for a living? So, and he's a musician, but uh, yeah, it's like, man, I'm in the, I'm in the wrong part of the music business, I guess. Um, but yeah, and in fact, um, oh, yeah, so that's, so I, let me, uh, when, I'm going to log off here in a minute, but when I do, I'm going to go ahead and do the, uh, I'll, I'll try to do it quick if I can, if I, if I feel like it's going to take me a while. I may not do it until later this afternoon uh, because I have to do some stuff for Apex. Um, I think I downloaded the file. Let me see. Let me see. Ba -ba 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 -ba. You know, it didn't because I quit. Okay. I mean, I didn't quit. I, I, I shut the window. I should have left the window open while I was downloading that. Okay. Um, season 17. Yeah. There we go. More options. So it looks like it's just a file. Uh, it's the same. Okay, this is cool. So I may, I may just drag that into the existing. That way, I have. That could work. Okay, it's done. Now it's done. See, I shut the window while it was downloading, and it, and it didn't finish. Um. So yeah, I'm just formulating a plan it's funny because i am always like trying to figure out ways i can do things faster but i charge by the hour so it's like what, what am i doing why am i doing that <sighs> but it's that's just i i my my composers appreciate it i think that my my employers appreciate it um, and barton is one of the best holy cow what a great composer he is i mean his his score work that i've heard for uh Picard is just freaking unbelievable. Uh, the first things I think I did with him, it may have been with Titanfall, which was the precursor to Apex, but he also scored the show uh, uh, 12 Monkeys. And um, I think some of my first sessions for him were on 12 Monkeys, which was, uh, that's pretty cool. Um, um, which I just watched the movie. I'd never seen the movie. I just watched it. It was really good. I was like, okay. Cool, because it's kind of a time, well, it is a time travel movie, uh, basically, and I, I like time travel movies. I mean, you know, time travel is kind of that deus ex machina kind of thing. Um, okay, we're in story mode now. Let's see. No, where am I? Where do I, where, where, where do I want? Oh, there we go. It's going to be a busy week. I'm also supposed to work for um, Call of Duty as well this week. Um so I'm supposed to be getting more stuff for that. So that'll be fun. All right. Now I can delete this. All right. So. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I got a lot of things to do. Mondays are hard sometimes because, you know, we all, we all have stuff that happened over the weekend that we have to deal with on Monday, right? So. Um, and I've got to I've got to write that Australian music too, so I, I got to do twenty to thirty tracks for that show, complete songs. So it's it's quite a uh, quite a an endeavor, um, but that show is really highly rated and uh, brings in some decent royalties. So um, what else? Let's see. So yeah, I'm going to try to find a fretless banjo too. That's kind of like. Yeah, no, when you're self-employed, it's really good to be busy. Uh, I, I, I don't complain about it. Although I do hit walls. I, you know, I, you know, I'm trying to think, what's the perfect amount of work in a day? I would say, you know, six hours is fine. But if I have to do more than six hours of sitting and playing guitar, um, and, and one day, you know, one day of 10 hours or 12 hours isn't bad. Um, but if I have to do like five of those days in a row, yeah, I, just just uh it's not good 
And so, uh, you know, I'm a wimp, and I'm like, oh, man, I have to work 10 hours a day every day, you know. And I'm like, I know, I know, I'm a wimp. Uh, I don't do a real job, so I have a pretend job. Um, so I don't produce anything of any real value, like all of you all, but I, I do what I do. Um, let's see. Yeah, and, and yeah, the heater thing, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Um, it's not on right now. Don't need it. It's hot out there. Well, it's not hot, but it was hot yesterday. Let's see. Alex is waiting in the wings for all of you guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Alex is. Well, it's funny because I, I don't think I don't think about that. And sometimes I'll, I'll send him something. I'm thinking about getting him. Hey, hey I'm going to get this. What do you think? And he goes, yeah, that's cool. And like, I mean, it'll be yours in a few years. And he's like, I don't want it in a few years. I, I want you to live as long as possible. Both my, all my kids are like, I can't always, you know, mess with them and say, oh yeah, you know, this is probably, this is probably the big one, you know, the hard, you know, <laughs> doing the, the whole uh, Fred Sanford <laughs> bit. And it's like, they are like, nope, nope. So, uh, what else? Was there another question here? Yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, years ago when, when David Letterman start, first started doing his late night show, he had a face-off between a humidifier and a dehumidifier, dehumidifier face-to-face. -face. Like, what's going to happen? Yeah, and, and Bruce, you're in the south and you're in a basement, so you definitely, like, you're, stu you're isn't your um, workshop in a basement? It looks like a basement workshop. Is Am I wrong on that? <laughs> my my um, grandfather put his workshop in the garage. Um, and he had a wood shop too. He made a lot of things. Uh, he made that, he made that right there, that, the, uh, jeweler chest, this thing. My grandfather made this. Isn't that cool? It was my mom's, he made it for my mom. So now I have it. And she had all her jewelry in it. And I've got capos and strings and slides or capos, picks, slides, all sorts of weird stuff in there. Uh, good Morgan. Um, Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, and I, you know, I've got a, I've, the, in, the instruments that are most valuable to me are the ones that, um, like my first electric guitar, which isn't worth that much, but it was my first electric guitar. Uh, so I have that. I have the, I always talk about the, or I, I say, you know, the, the, um, uh, the, I have the guitar that led me to God that belonged to, um, a worship leader back in the 70s and I told him you know hey if you ever sell this guitar don't sell it to anybody but me and he finally sold it to me and that was probably 10 years ago and I gave him more than it was worth because he was still in ministry and still lived on you know very little so I, I wanted to make sure he was blessed and I have that guitar and that's that to me is worth something um, I don't know I think the Martin baritone which is a prototype that's kind of cool but it's you know it's it's irreplaceable in that regard um, so, uh, I'm just, sorry, I'm reading Sam's post here. Music is a useful instrument for education because more than anything else, rhythm and harmony find their way into the inmost soul and, and take the strongest hold upon it. Plato. Yeah. And was it Plato or Aristotle that said, you know, give me, give me control of the musicians and the artists and I will control the nation. Something like that. Leo, what's going on? Uh, yeah, I boast too much, Leo. <laughs> Leo. I, I'm better at that, but yeah, mainly because I had nothing going on. So if I had a little thing going on, you would know about it. Um, I'm better now, but I think even rec fairly recently, sorry, I'm just trying to get my screens kind of similar. Even recently, I mean, you know, with his last 10 years, like if you talk to me for five minutes, you would know that I work with Justin Bieber. And it's like, yeah, now I, it's like, I, I, it's not that I'm at the twilight of my career. My career didn't get started until I was in my late forties. I'm kind of like freaking um, Whistler's mother, you know, uh, uh, What's the painter that started in, you know, old age? I, I mean, I played guitar since I was a kid and was seeking professional help, <laughs> seeking 
a professional career, but my professional career was mostly teaching private lessons, playing at churches and doing the occasional $50 session uh, and, and writing for original bands that made no money. So, I mean, it was like, it didn't really start happening for me until I was, till like 2007, 2008, 2005. I mean, I, but, but, and I say this, uh, you know, every time I wanted to quit, I really like hit that wall where I'm like, okay, I'm going to give up and get a real career. God drops a gig in my lap that's like, okay, that's a cool gig. Uh, and that would sustain me for a while, like something that encouraged me, essentially. Um, and that teaching those clinics in the 90s was one of those things. Um, I was married, been married, gosh, we got married in 87, married 10 years and, you know, trying to, ra and I had three kids at this point, And I got called to do this, uh, these clinics and, um, uh, it paid really well. I got to travel all over the country. Taylor, Bob Taylor gave me a free 814. Um, and uh, so that was super duper encouraging. And that was one of those things that happened just at the right time, right? When about the time I was like going, okay, what could I do? <laughs> Should I go back to college? Should I, <laughs> what, what can I do? And, you know, and then, and then after that, I think the next thing was my church. I started working at my church. I started being worship leader at my church. And that was a lot of responsibility, but it wasn't really the career path I wanted. Um, and, and, and I got to the point where if I'm going to be a professional worship leader, I call it being a professional Christian. <laughs> but, but if I was going to be a worship leader for a job, I should move out of California where I could afford to buy a house on that job. And so I had a couple churches around the country offer me pretty good money to move and become a worship leader. And I didn't. And I stayed here. And then I stopped doing that. Um, Still play it, still work at the church, but don't don't lead worship anymore. It wasn't really my goal and strong suit. And then, uh, but then other things started. You know, that's that's about the time, like mid two thousands, is when my career started taking off. I started working for Justin. That was a big thing. And by then, but once everything started kind of falling into place, I haven't been discouraged really. I get a little worried every now and then, but like, am I gonna? Like, I haven't gotten a gig, you know, I haven't had a session in a week. Anybody? But then I find out that, like, <laughs> um, Steve Gadd is like, man, you know, Steve Gadd's looking at his calendar. He goes, man, I don't have anything booked in June. Am I done? <laughs> you know, is my career over? And that's freaking Steve Gadd. So every musician's like that. So metaphysical, what's going on? Hey, what's not going on? David Sillers, been lurking. Oh, you thinking about investment talk. Yeah, yeah. Well, here... Again, what I what I tell everybody is create a fictitious portfolio on like Yahoo or Market Watchers, one of those websites. Put like pretend ten thousand dollars in five different companies, and then watch it go up and down. Like get used to the the rise and fall of it all, and and be impassionate. You know, non passionate, impassionate. Is that right? Non passionate, impassionate. Don't don't, don't subscribe to fear or greed. And you should be good. greed would cause you to um, would cause you to to put all your money in one stock, right? And think, oh, this stock's going to be big, and then the co company goes bankrupt, and you lose all your money. That's stupid. Okay, fear. What fear tends to do? It, it tends to t tell you to sell when you everyone else is selling, and that's see that's when you don't want to sell. Everybody else is selling. And I know that's hard to hear. And I, I don't want, I don't come back and go, Tom, you told me not to sell. And the market went down 60%. You know, I'm like, yeah, I know. I, I wrote it down too. I didn't sell. Um, but, but there, there's, um, if you study, if now, I don't know how true it's been, like say the last two or three years, but if you are trying to time the market, all right, which timing the market means buy when you think, you know, markets go, tends to go up and, and sell when you think the market, just before you think the market goes down. And you can look at charts and you can go every, wow, every December is a good month. So if you're in the market in December, it's always good. But October is always bad. So at the end of September, sell everything. Yeah, you could do that. Um, and you, that's called try, you know, trying to time the market. The problem with that, though, I think on average, if you miss the five best days, in any one year on the market, you're probably going to be flat for the year. But if you're if you're in the market for those five best days, you're going to be up. It's something like that. It's like an 
it's an unbelievably low number I mean, if you just miss these days because there's days where the market just goes what the heck happened today and in fact i don't even know what the market's doing today let's see <laughs> do i want to i know it was uh, last night it was um uh well it's pretty flat i mean nasdaq's down 67 uh the dow is up 12 that's it, flat it's s p is down four um uh, yeah if you um my my oil stocks are up though because oil's up so if i go to buy gas today and i have to pay an extra 10 cents a gallon i don't really care <laughs> so because i got a 15 gallon tank so that means it's going to cost me an extra dollar 50. but i may have made 150 dollars today in the stock market so um i think the dividends i get from just and i reinvest dividends that's another little thing that i do recommend that i the nice thing about reinvesting dividends and you have to pay tax on those dividends if they're in a brokerage account if they're in an IRA you don't um, but uh, reinvesting dividends it's it's like yeah, you know if it has a 1% dividend or 2% dividend you, you know every year you're buying more of that stock so instead of having 100 shares now you have 101 shares and then you have 104 shares and then you pretty and I just for dividend reinvestment I think I went from 100 shares to 312 shares of Intel um, and I wasn't even paying attention. All of a sudden, I had 312 shares of Intel. And like I said, I think I sold it for 70 share, 75 a share or something like that. We used some of that for the down payment on the house. So, yeah, you just, you know, I, I and, and here's the thing. My Chase account, with one button, I can change all of my uh, stock purchases, all those stocks from, pay, from reinvesting dividends to paying dividends. If I need extra income in a month, or for, for the rest of my life, I just turn that off. I still have all my stocks, but the dividends now come in cash to my account rather than um, reinvest in the stock. Now I can't really do that with an IRA, but with a um, <clears throat> uh, with a um, with your brokerage account, you could totally do that. And so it's kind of a way of, you know, your it's passive income. I love passive income, which means you know income that you don't actually have to work on. It's not it's not based on your labor. You, the labor made the money to buy the stock in the first place. Um, another warning, though, if a stock has too high of a dividend, like if you oh this stock has ten percent, I've learned this lesson. Oh, this stock is paying ten percent dividend. It's like too good to be true, almost always. The reason it's paying a ten percent dividend is because they haven't readjusted it. And the stock in the stock market, if you look at the history of the stock. It was a it's it's a ten dollar stock, but it was a hundred dollar stock. So if it was a hundred dollar stock paying a dollar, it was a one percent dividend. If it drops down to ten dollars and they haven't adjusted the dividend yet, it's a ten percent dividend. One dollar on ten dollars is ten percent. But they're about ready to either cut the dividend or slash it. And uh, so you got to pay attention to those kind of things. Um, one of the rules you can do um, I don't know where I heard this, but look at you can uh, Yahoo is great. You can take the chart of a stock and go um do the 10 year or the full like life you know for 20 30 year window click on that button you know lifetime or whatever and then turn on dividends you can there's a button there should be say something about like turn on dividends you'll see little d a d d d d d every every three months you'll see a d and then is hold your mouse over that d and see what the dividend is oh it paid 12 cents back in 1984 okay but in 1980 seven it was paying 20 cents and then so on and so forth if that dividend if they grow that dividend every year all right there's a company called rpm that i've owned forever and they literally every six quarters raise their dividend and it's a, it's a chemical company they make rust-oleum uh spray paint stuff like that but they make all sorts of things somebody has to make it right and they pay a, a decent dividend let me look it up i haven't looked it up in a long time I know I own it, but it's just like, uh, let's see. But that, you know, that's one of those things where you can you can do a little research on it. It doesn't take brilliance to, but if a stock typically has good dividend growth, and right now because the interest rates are raising, if you just put your money in a money market fund that pays 4%, that's better than just sitting there. Now it might not keep up with inflation, but that's always true. Uh, let's see, I said RPM, right? RPM International um oh 82 dollars a share dang okay 
<laughs> it didn't, up up uh, 34 cents today. Um, blah, 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 blah. What was I looking up? Okay, so I click on Max, um, a full screen. Um, add the, oh, there's the dividends. Oh, now they did quit playing dividends. Oh, in the 90s. Okay, but 91, uh, six cents. Uh, 92 seven cents uh, seven cents it just keeps going up eight cents eight cents eight cents nine cents a share ten cents a share eleven cents a share uh, and sometimes you'll even have a special dividend 40 40 cents a share 42 cents a share so currently the dividend is I can't it won't let me see it let's see because it's but uh, shoot oh I know what I was gonna look up here Go back um, but up, 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 profile specialty chemicals that's it's so it's sector okay so there's sectors I don't know like 12 sectors this sector that this company RPM is basic materials so that could be wood paper uh, I don't know it could be a lot of things in fact can you click on that is that a link no um, but and then the industry within that sector is specialty chemicals all right so you can also see if the insider trading, if they're buying or selling, if there's a lot of selling going on, that might be a, a concern. Um, bu, 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 bu. But if I were to click on the company, the um, Wikipedia, oops, no. Yeah, see, here's the thing. Um, if I wasn't, if I wasn't a guitar player, I'd be a, I'd be a a broker, an analyst, um, uh, bu, 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 bu. Yeah, okay, here they are. All right, let me, I'm going to read off some of the, the brands that they own. And they, that's the other thing about like this company, a lot of companies do this. They just buy up little companies. So all of these companies are probably not companies they started, but companies they bought. Um, let's see. Tremco, Carboline, Universal Sealant, Stone Art, RPM Belgium, uh, Dayglo, Drive, CT, uh, this is right, yeah, RPM. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, where's it? Oh, where's their website? Here it is. Yeah, so um, I don't need to ask a question about RPM. Let's go say, go to them. Bright test, Illum yeah, illumination. It's funny. Carboline, that's Carboline. Dayglow, gosh, 1991 they bought Dayglow. Uh, Rustoleum, they bought 94. Um, Tremco, looks like roofing stuff. Um, DAP, they bought DAP, so they own DAP. So I, I buy DAP all the time for that, you know, house and stuff. Um, a lot of companies I'm these I've not heard, but anyway, yeah. So, um, <laughs> nice Pepper. You want to ride in the back of a limo? <laughs> well, I've done that. You can rent a limo. It's not, you know, not, it's not as expensive as you think if you want to go for a little ride. Uh, I've been in limos. Uh, it's fun. You know, I, 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 you know, I like that I can get stuff done in the back of a car, like doing an Uber. Um, so I, you know, I will sometimes Uber to places where I don't want to deal with parking. Does that make sense? Or if I think I'm going to have like a, like one bourbon or a glass of wine or a beer. I mean, one, one glass of wine and I'm like, you know, I'm like, yeah, I shouldn't drive. So I don't, I don't drive if I'm going to drink and by drink, I mean, have one drink because I'm a lightweight. I'm a super duper lightweight. Um, but yeah, so yeah, Google's, I mean, uh, sorry, Yahoo's a great place to kind of look at different stocks. Heck, you could even buy, let's see, um, like if I enter Holly, what comes up? Holly Energy Partners. Okay, we can buy Holly Energy Partners. 
$17 a share. It's up 1% today, up 17 cents. Uh, let's see, dividend. It pays 8% dividend, Holly. And what do they do? What, what does Holly Energy Partners do? Oh, they're, they're an oil and gas company. <laughs> oil and gas midstream. So their sector is energy. Their industry is, it says oil and gas midstream, which may be, they're based out of Dallas, which is a big oil and industry thing. So, uh, but it provides petroleum product and crude transportation, terminal and storage. So their storage, yeah, that's a big industry. Um, let's look at their chart. So Holly, sorry, that's probably not the industry you want to invest in. Yeah, the, their chart's done better, but you know, back in 2013, they were like 40 bucks a share. So uh, they crashed at, well, everybody, all, everything in the oil sector crashed. Remember when oil, a, an oil contract, a barrel of oil was below a, a zero dollars? Um, they would pay you to take it. So, but it's been trading flat. Okay, let's see who else do we have. Bruce, let me see what happens if I enter Bruce. Bruce, Bruce Fund. So it's a fund. What's the Bruce Fund? $536 a share, Bruce. What the heck? What is, what's your dividend? 6%, no. Oh, holdings turnover, 6%. Yield is 2.23%. Okay, what do they... So now with a, a fund, you can look at... Oh, it's a large... Large cap value fund. Morningstar rating of five, wow, or four. Wow, that's pretty good. Four out of five. Inception was in 1968. Well, that's after your inception, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Holly. Uh, let's see. Uh, again, though, like I said, I hedge my life. So we all have to, I mean, unless we're, we're driving, okay, if you're driving an electric car, if you got a Tesla, well, maybe buy a Tesla. But if you have a Tesla, then maybe buy stock in the energy company although where holly is i think that's owned by the state now right isn't that i wouldn't have i owned edison for a while i don't think you're edison i forget who you are um but i owned edison for a while and i got rid of it i didn't really like it um i owned pepsi i owned coke for a while too and i sold i made money on both those stocks pepsi was a pain though and not a bad pain but pepsi kept spinning buying things and spinning them off so i ended up with five shares of this over here and 10 shares of this over there. And it's like, stop doing that. It's like makes when it, when you, when I come to sell things, I don't know what I paid for anything. I don't know what my cost basis is. It's brutal. Oh, oh here's holdings. Okay. Let's see what the Bruce fund holds. Let's say they're, they're top 10 holdings. Oh, okay. Oh, let's see. Wait. Okay. Their biggest holding is healthcare and then utilities and then industrials. So yeah, and then financial services. Not sp oh, here we go. Oh, they own Abbey. I own Abbey. Uh, Abbott Labs. Uh, Allstate is their second biggest. CMS Energy, Duke Energy. I own that. Merck, Morgan Stanley. Ne these are all that Bruce owns. The Bruce Energy. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see what Dennis is. Let's see what I pull up. Dennis. Avery Dennison. Okay, so <laughs> I know what Avery Dennison is. Uh, let's see, what's its sector? Okay, profile. 178 bucks, dude. So consumer cyclical. Now, okay, now here's a here's a here's the thing. If you think the mark consumer cyclical is good to have. Um, if you think that we're headed for a downturn, which a lot of people are saying we're headed for a recession, a mild recession, maybe even a big one. Um, if we're headed to that, then consumer cyclicals are good to have. Um, and so, um, because they're pretty much recession proof, people still need shampoo and toothpaste and things like that. So Avery Dennison is though packaging and containers, boxes, right? Uh, paper products, things like that. Um, so going back to the summary here, they pay a dividend of $3 a share. It's basically one point. 7% dividend. Uh, so Avery Dennison, so you could buy Avery. De so we could buy the <laughs> moderators fund, which would be the Holly Energy, which would be gas services, the Bruce, <laughs> the Bruce fund, and Avery Dennison. <laughs> so I think let's see what Tom is. I forget what Tom is. What's Tom? Uh, is it Thomas symbol? Tommy, Tom, Tom Z would be 
Tomy Environmental Solutions, 77 cents a share. <laughs> that sounds about right. Oh my gosh, it's up 10% today though, up seven cents. Holy cow, It's I, I'm sure it's de delisted. If a stock stays under a dollar, it gets delisted, which makes it a little bit harder to buy and sell, which nobody likes to be de delisted. But Avery Dennison, not a bad stock. I've always liked that stock. I've never owned it directly. Probably have you know mutual funds that have it in it. Uh, let's look at the max here. Oh, it's it's hovering. At, you know, it's been as high as 210 back in 21, but it's definitely it's definitely in its high way high range for this. You know, so you're stable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Try Fort. Yeah, for it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I, I don't have an advisor. I do. I'm, I'm, I'm what's called self-directed at Chase. So they let me do it myself. Um, I actually, because I was so into this when I was a kid, when I was 17, my stockbroker, who was like a, 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 a vice president, he was my stepdad's stockbroker, um, and he, he was the vice president at Prudential. And he, he said, we'll sponsor you for your Series 7 exam. If you want to take it, we'll sponsor you. Because you have to have somebody sponsor you for, I think, the Series 7 or something like that. And I'm like, you know, I, no, I really want to give this music thing a try. Um, it's funny because I went to him years ago. You know, I don't, that was my broker. And it was my broker even when I moved out here. Uh, for a while and I would always go see him if every time I was in Indiana I'd go hang out there for a little bit and I remember telling him you know what you guys should do we should create a fund of, of vintage instruments and they go really I go yeah we just rent a vault somewhere um, a, you know that's perfect temperature and everything and we start to accumulate vintage instruments and attack you know b base the price of the fund on the value of the instruments and um, and had they done it, it would have been the best performing fund ever, but they didn't do it when I asked them to. It would have like blown away every fund ever. Uh, because I think back then you could, when I suggested you, you could get a 59 Les Paul for around $5,000, which at the time was a lot of money. In it. And before that, it was like $300. People were buying in the 80s Les Pauls for like 300 bucks in the 70s, you know, it wasn't a big, like nobody, everybody wants strats, you know, and so everybody was, and, and then the people were buying vintage strats and modding them and everything. And you, so you could be, get a vintage strat for 300 bucks. It's like, you know, pre CBS. And, you know, had you accumulated those then, not only the fact that you're accumulating them would take them out of circulation, which would increase the value just by doing that, let alone by the, the fact that there's only, there's a finite supply, there's only so many. 59 Les Pauls, and pretty much everyone's accounted for. I know there are only three lefty, and Paul McCartney owns one of them. A friend of mine had two of them, uh, but he was a lefty guitar trader, so. Nice. Um, okay, I should go. <laughs> Sorry, I, I hope you don't like hate that I went uh, sidetracked on this whole, oh, they mentioned a church, uh, to do, I, oh, yeah. Oh, uh, Fry, uh, the 30-watt combo vocal harmonizer pedal. Oh, cool. Nice. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, Leo. Well, I met my wife at church, so hey. <laughs> We've been married 36 years. Uh, also, I'm intermittent fasting right now, so but I'm not hungry. Of Scotland, Lord, <laughs> Lord de Bruce <laughs> of Scotland. Yeah, yeah. So just look up your name and see what stock comes up on Yahoo, and then and then you go, okay, uh, yeah. But fictitiously buy five stocks, fifty ten thousand dollars in each. Put it in a fictitious portfolio on Yahoo, and then watch it, and that'll give you a sense of like, oh, okay, do I have a stomach for this? My fifty thousand dollars is now worth twelve thousand. Yeah, I don't have a stomach for this, and that's fine, totally fine. It was probably a good thing you didn't invest it. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, everyone here is married older. Yeah, yeah, I, I've seen your, I think that was your church service that I saw you play at. Was that your church, Pepper, that you played at? That was amazing. I'm so proud of you for doing that. 
and at school the men are too young. Yeah, no, it's uh, uh, I know uh, I don't I'm not I don't want to make you feel bad, but I'm just so glad I'm not single right now. <laughs> yeah, that would be uh, I don't uh, yeah. Have a good week, AJ. You too. And guitars are an investment. Uh, uh, many of my guitars, most of my guitars are worth more than what I paid for. So, okay. I got some work to do. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you like letting me just vent and talk and stuff and being here with that. And uh, I know I scared a bunch of guitar players off, but you know, we had a good 20, 20 average, 20 the whole time. So that's good. Um, I will do the chart for this the next four bars okay so i'll put that in the in the in the uh, discord which is linked up there so if you don't if you're not a member of the discord join the discord no no big deal it's free um and you can um uh you can download those and you can put them in your own little pdf or whatever print them up i don't care you do whatever you want uh but we'll get those next four bars you can start working i'll do the fingering that's the hardest part is putting those little numbers there that's the hardest part. That's why they're all uneven because I have to do that by hand. So not by hand, but I have to drag it and then move it in position. So it's uh, it's not optimal, <laughs> but it, that's what takes a long time. So anyway, let me uh, let me get on that. Okay, take care, everyone. God bless. Bye.